routes should be nested, specifically when one, did I do the thing? I did. Uh, routes should be spe nested specifically uh, when one resource exists which is in dependent upon another resource. So like the simple check for you is like thinking about your resources and saying, okay, can this resource exist without the other resource? So in the context of Craigslist, uh, can a category exist without an article? Yes. Okay, sweet. Can an article exist without a category? No. Then articles should be nested under categories. That said, uh, that rule is uh, superseded by this rule, <laughs> which is uh, you should try really, 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 really hard uh, to keep your resource nesting to a maximum of three levels deep. Uh, like anything beyond that, and it's just, it's complete convoluted catastrophe, right? Like, so confusing, it doesn't really make sense anymore. Uh, yes? Okay, cool. So does that answer your question? When to nest? Okay, now how to nest. How to nest. I'm in the dogs controller here. I want to write the dogs index route. What's my route? Slash users, slash uh, maybe user ID, and then slash dogs, and now and this is my this is my nested route here, right? Uh, do end, and then here, right? Like we're gonna say uh, at user equals user find uh, params params uh, user underscore ID. Uh, then we'll say at dogs equals at user dot dogs, and then we'll render out uh, to the uh, dogs index page. Yeah. So. No, and this is a very specific point. Nested routes do not mean nested views. Your view folders, each each resource gets its own view folder, period, hands down. Regardless of whether it's nested within another resource or not, it uh, gets its own view folder. So users has a view folder, dogs have a view folder. The the, the view for dogs is, is not nested. It's just it's standalone. Uh, this way, like, we don't have to, and, and the reasoning behind this is really simple, right? Uh, I've told you a couple times, but I'll tell you again. Like a huge part of RESTful architecture is establishing a pattern that we can all adhere to, so that we can like very easily traverse our application, regardless of how large it is. Uh, if you like, if I was in a if I was in an application that had like 600 different resources, 600 different view folders, and I wanted the one for dogs, I don't want to like have to remember that dogs is nested under under users and then under like emotional resources and then dogs, right? Like I just want to type dogs straight up. Uh, I just want to like look through the folders and find dogs straight up, right? So the, the routing architecture, uh, the actual address in the controller is the thing which is nested, right? Uh, nested routes are kind of a pain in the ass at first, right? Just because like uh, it's like adding this layer of complexity to, to what you're doing. Uh, but you'll find out really quickly that at least for like the like the one or two level deep uh, routes, uh, they're they're very very helpful, right? Because like you know later in life uh, we're gonna write like a post uh, to slash users slash uh, user ID slash dogs, right? And this will be the route to create a new dog, right? And when we're in here, you know, because this dog is going to belong to this user, like one of the first things we need to know is, is that user, you know? Uh, if, if you didn't have a nested architecture, you'd run into an issue where like out in the view, you know, in the, in the like get... in the get to user IDs dog slash new, right? Like, so if this wasn't nested, you know, if this was just this, 
right? Then how do you pass out to that what user it is that, that the dog is going to belong to? You know what I mean? Right? Uh, because like there's no reference to the user here at all, so you would like to lose that information. Now, uh, the the this specific uh, example is probably not the best, right? With users and dogs, because you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I got lots of ways that I could like figure out the user. You know, you could probably just like call current user. Uh, and you're like clearly the current user dot dogs dot new because like the current user is the person making the dog. Um, but like thinking about it in the context of other uh, other resources down the road, right? Like if it was if it was windows and curtains, you know, you, you're, not, you're probably not going to write a current current curtain method. You know what I mean? Uh, so like the by the, the very nature of having this nested architecture, uh, like the the variable around what user it is that it's referring to here is always passed along with the route. It's passed along with the route on the git route. It's passed along with the route on the post route, right? Like it's passed along with all of them. So it's not like something you have to go out of your way additionally uh, to sort of get a handle on. Does that make sense? So, and then here, like to finish out this post route, we would say, so we like find the user and we maybe say like at user.dogs.new params dog. Uh, Whoops, at dog equals dog, there we go. So if at dog dot save, end else uh, redirect to slash uh, users slash uh, at user dot ID slash dogs. Uh, else uh, ERB back to uh, the dogs new, right? Yeah, so that's the post route. Cool. Answer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so user underscore ID is just a is just a name that we made up, right? Uh, we could totally like come over this entire file and we could change it to like user dot you know super amazing uh, ID variable thing thingy maybe. And as long as we use the exact same thing in all the in all the places where that dependency occurs, then whatever, right? Uh, we happen to use the, the uh, user ID, user underscore ID here, just because it makes it makes like a lot of sense to us, the developer, right? Like we're we're creating a placeholder uh, here between these two slashes, and whatever value between those two slashes comes in the URL is going to be assigned in the param hash to this name, user user underscore ID, right? Uh, which is like makes a lot of sense because like the thing which we should be passing between those two slashes should should be the ID of the user. So like it's a good reference point for us. Yeah. User dot ID, right? So like at user dot ID, this is not something that we made up, right? Uh, and we could not come in here and call this like uh, Fliddlywinks if we wanted to, right? Like that, that's not gonna work out. ID is an attribute on the table of, uh, of the user's uh, of like each record in the users table and is an attribute of this individual user instance it's not able to be modified right ID is ID uh, and uh, yeah does that make sense sweet So you're 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 making it here in the route, right? Um, this route. So let's say you know off in the view, uh, users index. Uh, let's say we've, uh, our users now. Uh, let's say have a link uh, to 
like make a new dog, right? So out here, we'll like this anchor tag needs to go somewhere, you know? So it's gonna go to users slash uh, string interpolate uh, current uh, underscore user dot ID uh, slash dogs slash new. So right here is where like we're generating the string of the URL that, that we wanna go to, right? In this anchor tag and this link. Then this link comes into the controller uh, and comes down the controller list until it finds a matching pattern. In which case, this is the matching pattern. This one right here. Use slash users slash some value slash dogs slash new. The colon here represents like uh, this is just it's some value. Right? It doesn't matter to the routing mechanism what that value is. As we saw yesterday in the example, I don't know if you remember now, when we were talking about like the order of the routes, when we tried to do the new above the show, uh, or the show above the new, rather, uh, when we clicked on the link, it said, oh, hey, couldn't find anything in your database with an ID of new, right? And that's because like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't check to see what the, what the thing is which is coming in between the slashes here. It just, you know, it, it just sees this pattern. It sees slash users slash something slash dogs slash new. And it's like, oh, okay, sweet. I've got a route that matches that pattern. Here you go. And then whatever the something was here, right, uh, it assigns that something to the params hash uh, within that route under the name of, like, whatever you told it to be called here. So, like, right here is where you're telling it what to be called in the params hash. Out here is where you're like actually constructing the string that is going to be passed in. Does that make sense? Sweet. Any other questions about that? Okay, great. Um, That's correct. So yeah, if, if, if we reverse the order of these, uh, whenever we call the new route, it's just going, right, it's just matching the pattern again. Slash users slash something. So when you go to the user's new route, it's like slash users slash new. Oh sweet, that's definitely something. We'll call that something ID, and then we'll go to the database and try to look, that, look up something called new as the ID, right? So the order of operations matters here. Well, everywhere, but here specifically. Uh, no, it's just these two, because they're the only two that share uh, the, the, the a pattern with that level of similarity, right? Uh, other routes share the same pattern, uh, or, or the same exact pattern, right? Uh, but the difference is they have different verbs, right? And a valid route, just to reiterate, is both an address and the verb, you know? Cool. So that's why we can have duplicate addresses because the verb is different. Sweet, sweet, super sweet, mega sweet, mega super ultra awesome sweet. Awesome. Right there. Okay. Super mega ultra awesome sweet. All right. Uh, so, what else do you want to see here? Okay. Something. I know you. I know you all have questions about something. The short answer is use awesome print. Yeah, it's a gem. I didn't actually get to green on it, did I? Because I didn't want to like show you my password. I remember now. I still don't want to show you my password. 
Um, I say, uh, you know what I should really do is I should like create a file on my computer with my GitHub username and password that I could like reference so that I could like call out to it and I could say like import file at this location without echo. Yeah. Hide your keys. That's right. Um, what's that? No, actually, no, 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 no. I like this one here. We're going to totally, we'll go do it with the Giphy API. Yeah? So we'll just use the same application that we were working on before, right? And we'll make a new API wrapper in 11 minutes. So I'm going to truck through, and you're going to, like, watch attentively. Please hold your applause till the end. God damn it. Yes, it's being recorded. Okay, uh, so I'm going to make a new controller here called Giphy. Uh... Giffies, gifts, controller. And I'll make a new model called uh, Giffy Adapter. Uh, right off the bat, I'm I'm super making bad convention as my model does not match the corresponding controller. You'll forgive me, right? Yeah. Great. I'm gonna say class Giffy Adapter uh, inher doesn't inherit from Jack shit. Uh, but it does include HTTPARTY, ended out, uh, def INITILIZE, end def test endpoint, uh, takes in an endpoint, uh, end uh, self dot class dot get uh, endpoint. Uh, ah. And then off to the gem file we go. Gem uh, HTTPARTY. Um, and we'll go back to the adapter where we'll, we'll require HTTPARTY. HTTP space it properly. Uh, then in the controller. We'll say get to slash gifts uh, do end uh, erb to uh, gifts index. So now I've created a dependency for a view file. So I need to go and make that a folder called gifts and a file called index.erb. Uh, this one's going to have an h1. It's like uh, show me the uh the funny the funnies there we go um great let's go to giphy api and scrolling down scrolling down get started the api here we go okay uh there's a public beta key probably need to keep that um, overview, upload, emoji support, host, api.giphy.com. I know uh, that in uh, in HTTP party, I need to set a base URI, uh, which is equal to uh, the place that I'm going. Uh, so then... Um, Let's say back in the GIFs controller, let's say at Giphy equals uh, Giphy adapter dot new. Uh, and then we'll say add Giphy dot test endpoint. Uh, and we'll just pass this root for now. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then we'll AP this. Uh, let's see what that gets us. So we'll k out our terminal and we'll go in our local host to shit, this is the wrong application. Kill it. Other application. Uh, there we go. Seriously? 
I don't care. Okay, moving on. Key out our terminal, come to this page, and we're gonna slash gifts. That's the route we made. All right? So show me the funnies, and then a fuck ton of data is what we got. Like a lot of data. And it doesn't help that we're awesomely printing this data because this is a, this is not data that awesome print knows how to consume. Uh, it's a string, which is what? It's a friggin' web page. What it is? Giphy API meta doesn't know. Yeah. So HTTP API diffy.com. Oh look, v1 slash gif slash. So here's it says search to an endpoint. Um, so looks like the route that they're showing us here in the example is HTTP API giphy.com v1 gifs. Uh, and then search with then a query string where Q is the key uh, and then equals funny plus cat and then the next key in the query string is API key which equals this API key so if we just like took this whole thing and came back to our Giphy adapter and removed endpoint here and just threw in the whole thing we don't need the base URI, this stuff, uh, because like it's it's already uh, applied up in the base URI method. I don't think I need this v1 either. Uh, I'd I'd rather apply that in the base URI. Um, so let's try it again. Whoops, wrong page. Uh, let's k out the terminal. Let's try it again. Okay, 404 not found. Well, that didn't work out. Right here. Thanks. Try it again. 404 not found. All right. I uh, shouldn't have to restart. I'm sorry? No. No, it's uh, it's not an equal situation. This is a method and this is what the method receives as, as its input. Uh I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up here. Back it up. Yeah, there we go. Like, like, like so. Let's try that. There we go. Now we got some data back. So, like, I screwed something up, apparently. And we got a lot of data back. Like, a lot, a lot. Right? Now, uh, I mentioned to you that, like, probably the number one thing you can do to parse through this data is to use awesome print, right? You heard me say that? And here's why. Uh, if we came to this controller and instead we were just peeing, this data. So let's k it out and let's refresh. Here's the data. Uh, I don't know how you feel about about this, but uh, I I would go blind, like super quick. Can't can't deal. Uh, so like merely just by awesome printing it, or even uh, if you pretty printed it. God damn it. Well, I'd have to require pretty print. Pretty print would be better. Awesome print is, is, is better still. But that's my opinion. Um, so, uh, refresh. So now we got like this, at least now we have uh, the data in some like fashion that we can like see what it is that's going on. We can see that it's a hash of data that came back. Inside that hash is a string key called data. Uh, the string key data corresponds to an array, and then it appears that that array is the thing would actually, which actually holds uh, all these all these things, all all the results. And it looks like it gave back 24 or 25 because it's zero based index, 25 results. Uh, that array ends. Uh, then the next key in our result is meta, uh, which corresponds to a hash which just like gives us some information about our request. Its status was 200, its message was okay, it has an ID. Uh, and then the last option is pagination, which tells us the, uh, the total number of uh, entries that it found in my query. It tells me the total number of queries that it returned to me, 25 in a set. And it tells me the offset which it returned to me, which is currently at zero, so it started at the top. 
Uh, you could change the count or the offset uh, to like get different results back from different places within like their giant Gibby array. Okay, hold on. Uh, offset, offset is like, so if it's 25 entries per page, uh, then offset is that you're starting at page zero. So if you change the offset, if you like sent, uh, I would imagine, I'm just guessing here, but I imagine that if you sent as an additional query string uh, in that, in the thing up top, right, like here, damn it, damn, okay, you know what, you all go to hell. Uh, not you, the, the files. Uh, uh, I was talking to my files. You don't talk to your files? Seriously? I talk to your files. I talk to my files all the time. I talk to my code editor. I talk to my files. I talk to my servers. Yeah. Okay. I'm not very nice to them at all. No. Fuck their feelings. I'm not empathetic towards them. Uh, if they wanted me to be, if they wanted me to be nice, they should have did what the fuck I told them the first time. Uh, yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so let's let's uh, like move quickly here because I don't want to cut into your lunch too much. Um, yeah, I got one minute. Shit. Okay. Uh, so we got back this data, right? And um, now we want to like we want to display that data out to the page. Uh, let's say shit 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 let's say let's kill this server and let's say that we wanted to make objects out of the data that we were getting back right so be rake uh generate uh, migration i hate uh, name equals uh create uh gifs right and now let's like really quickly go to create users create Gifts. Uh, oh no, wrong one. This one. Boom. Uh, so this is going to be uh, gifts, and a gif is just going to have like uh, a name and an image underscore URL, and then that's it. Okay. I also need to make. Uh, don't care. Sure, maybe. Uh, I, I'm just like rushing now, right? Okay, cool. So there's our GIF object. So now, like back in um, in our controller, uh, maybe we say like uh, maybe like make a method here that's like GIF dot parse. Uh, GIFs, which takes in our endpoint. Um, I skipped over a section here where, like, usually I would like search, I'd like poke at the endpoint and poke at the endpoint and poke at the endpoint until like such time I found the endpoint that I was really looking for, and then I would rename that endpoint. I'd rename, I'd like make a new method called like, you know, search GIFs. You know what I mean? Um, which. God damn it, I just wish I wasn't out of time. Um, so over here now, let's do uh, def uh, self dot uh, parse gifs, uh, which takes in a, a gifs uh, array. And um, like here is where we're gonna like actually work with the data. So the adapter is just responsible for going out and getting the data, right? And then the controller hands off that data, right? The controller like gets calls out to the adapter, says, "Hey, go get me some data," and then immediately hands that data off to your model level method, which is in charge of like parsing through that data. Um, so let's see. Back to the controller. Let's. Uh, Let's now go to the adapter. No, go to, to the this. Let's say AP the gifts array. Right. I want to change the thing which I'm actually sending over here uh, because remember that the data the data structure was what it was. The data structure was a hash with a key of data that then corresponds to an array. 
I just want to hand the array uh, off to, to my model method. So I can like do some very initial parsing right off the bat by just throwing in the square brackets here and saying data, right? So that now like the thing which is actually going to my model method here is the data, is the array of attributes. So let's run this again. Motherfuck. Mm. Okay, we'll run this again. Damn it. We'll run this again. Okay. Uh, and now we just have the array, right, without the other data. It's just the array straight up. So now I'm like looking at each one of these array things, right? Like I'd probably come back into my model method. Like it's an array. I need to iterate over that array, right? So I'm going to go like gifs array dot each do uh, gif end and maybe I like AP the GIF right here. You know what I mean? Um, okay, it out, refresh it again. Take a look at the thing again. All right, so now it's like each each one of those things is, uh, is here. Now I need to like uh, look at, at, uh, at each individual one, right? Because like there's a lot of data here and I want to like get into it and, and get something out of it useful to me. So instead of APing the entire object from each iteration, uh, let's say I, I want to like drill into this hash a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe images is the place I should start, right? So I come back to my code and I say gif images, right? Uh, and then uh, actually, I probably wouldn't. Uh, I probably wouldn't do this with the iteration. Like in my first pass through, I would probably say like gifs array zero, uh, and and then like and just like work with the one so that it's a little bit cleaner because like they should be all the same, right? Uh, and then here images, right? So let's it out and run it again. Okay, so now it just hands me back the one, the one thing, right? Uh, and specifically, just the one images attribute of the one thing. So then I like drill down a little bit further. I'm like, okay, well, within this images hash, I've got fixed height, fixed height still, fixed height downsampled, fixed height still, fixed width. Uh, lots of lots of options here. I'm just gonna go with. Shit, it is much done. We're almost done. I'm just gonna go with fixed height. Okay, great. So then I come back over here and I like tag that on, right? Boom. Okay, on my terminal, run it again. Okay, now I'm like getting closer, right? Now I'm like, okay, maybe a uh, URL. That seems like the thing I want. I'm gonna try to talk less. You can just follow along. So now it's just the URL, right? But this is what I actually like want, probably to store on my object is the image URL. So now I come back over here and I like take this whole thing. I come come down into here. And what am I gonna do? I'm like I'm making a gif dot new where image underscore URL correlates to this instance at this address, right? And that handles the, the image URL. Now I also need, I needed a name attribute. So uh, let's, let's come back up here and uh, like erase all this and try again now for names. Slug. Slug seems legit, and it's right at the top, top level, so I don't have to like dive super deep down in to get it, right? I could just like confirm that right here. Pass in the string, come back, refresh, take a look down at the bottom. Oh, now it's now it's funny. It's funny cat some shit, right? So now I've got that address. So I just cut out that address and add it to my iteration below under name, 
is going to be this one at at that address, All right? Sweet. So like now I've, I've gone through the process of drilling sort of down into this data structure piece by piece by piece until I like got to the to the exact thing I wanted, and then I pull that that like ultimate address out and throw it into my my like big iteration array, and proceed from there. So now back in the controller, um, I could probably like make myself a variable like at gifts equals gift at all, right? Which then means that like out in my uh, index. Shit. Now I can each, and I'll like each over gifts, each gif. I'll make it a ul. And then within here, uh, I'll make an li. And within that li, I'll pe. Um, No, we're gonna make a an image. God damn it! An image. Boom. And the URL here is going to be the gif dot image underscore URL, right? So now when I reload the page. Relation gifts does not exist. Where gifts? You should get used to saying this phrase. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> Alright. Okay, now make the, the bullet points disappear on the lease. <laughs> <laughs>